Hello everyone, I hope your semesters are going well. My name is Mark Caranil, and for my Spring 2016 Tripoli 236 project, I'd like to cover Organic Light Emitting Diodes, or OLEDs. So before we begin in earnest, I'd like to give you guys a brief overview of the information that's going to be presented. We're going to look at the structure of Organic Light Emitting Diodes. What materials are these devices made out of and how are they oriented to give us the final product? Next we're going to look at the construction methods used to actually apply the organic material to the device. How we literally put the O in OLED. We're going to look at a lot of the different organic light emitting diode variants. Uh, you'll find that there's a lot of different flavors of this technology depending on your particular application or need. And then finally, we're going to look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of this technology over some of its predecessors like light emitting diodes. And we're also going to look at some of its modern day applications. So let's get to it. So what are organic light emitting diodes? Well, to keep it very simple and straightforward, OLEDs are simply LEDs, regular LEDs, that employ the use of organic materials. If you were to look at how these two technologies work, you'd find that they're exactly the same. They both work off the principle of electrophosphorescence. The idea that extra energy created during the recombination process of electrons and holes is emitted from the device in the form of light. We've also seen many times in this class that the construction material the material that the device is made up of has a huge impact on how the device actually performs in real life. That is exactly the case in the form of OLEDs. They work the same as regular light emitting diodes, but the fact that they use organic materials affords us a lot of advantages in performance and allows us to use this technology in a lot of interesting applications, applications that we're going to cover later in this presentation. These devices typically run from 100 to 500 nanometers thick, but the main point is that they operate the same as regular light emitting diodes, but they're just made with, in part, organic materials. Let's take a look at the structure of an organic light emitting diode. As I alluded to in the previous slide, there are many similarities between organic light emitting diodes and regular light emitting diodes. And when it comes to the substrate, the anode, and the cathode, that stays true. They're exactly the same. You have your substrate, which serves as the support of the device. You have your anode, which removes electrons from the conductive layer and is typically constructed with indium tin oxide. And then you have your cathode, which injects electrons into the emissive layer, uh, referring to the diagram on the right. The cathode is typically constructed with aluminum. As we're about to find out, though, the emissive layer and the conductive layer, which are typically made up, made up of organic materials, is the main difference. So let's look at that. In the diagram on the right, we can see the conductive layer in orange. The purpose of this layer is to transport holes from the anode, or if you want to think of it in a different light, it's to inject electrons to the anode. And this layer is typically made up of polyaniline, which is a type of organic material. In the same diagram, we show the emissive layer as green. And the purpose of this layer is to transport electrons from the cathode or to inject holes to the cathode. This layer is typically made up of polyparaphenylene or polyphenylene vinylene. And if there are any chemists watching this, I apologize for butchering those two names. <laughs> Let's look now at some of the construction methods used to implant the organic material onto an OLED. You'll find that the three methods that we're about to go over are kind of similar to what we saw in chapter three uh, of the course which dealt with how devices are fabricated. But, but the first method is called vacuum deposition. And in this, in this method of vacuum, de vacuum deposition a organic molecules are evaporated and and they're allowed to condense onto a cooled substrate. All of this happens in, inside a sealed vacuum chamber. The problem with this method, however, is it's, it's quite inefficient and it's quite expensive too. 
which is why that which is why manufacturers tend to tend to lean more towards the other two methods that we're about to discuss. The first of which is organic vapor phase deposition or OVPD. And in this method we we use gas to transport organic molecules onto cold substrates uh, instead of using a vacuum. And what this does is it increases the efficiency of the manufacturing process and it also reduces the production cost. Finally I think we have the more interesting of the three methods used to implant organic materials onto an OLED device and that's inkjet printing. Yeah, you can actually spray the organic material onto the substrate like ink on paper during the printing process with an inkjet printer. This is probably one of the better methods and more more commonly used methods in industry to create organic light emitting diodes. Uh, and, and the main advantage to this method is that they there's a low cost and with this method you can create large films or displays. Let's look now at the different types of organic light emitting diodes. Uh, there are two main types actually that are used in industry. The first is a passive matrix OLED which is also called a PMOLED. They're made up of strips of cathode, anode, and organic material, as we discussed earlier. And the intersections of these materials make the pixels. Uh, the general downside to using this type of OLED is that they consume a lot more power than the other types. The other main type of organic light emitting diode are active matrix organic light emitting diodes, or AMOLEDs. These are made with full layers of cathode, anode, and organic material. And the difference is the anode is placed on top of a thin film transistor array. And the purpose of this TFT array determines is, is to determine which of the pixels actually turn on. It turns out that organic light emitting diodes come in even more flavors depending on your particular application or need. The picture on the bottom of this slide here shows an example of a transparent organic light emitting diode. When configured properly, you can show different pictures or text in, color, in different colors, but you can still see the objects on the other side. These would be really great for heads-up displays. You have also top emitting OLEDs, and even more interesting, foldable organic light emitting diodes, where you can literally twist and shake and you know, fold the uh, LED array and during the entire process you would still maintain a quality picture and there's a picture there's a, there's a picture in a slide uh, a couple slides down that shows a great example of a foldable organic light emitting diode lastly we have white organic light emitting diodes which would be used for lighting uh, what's really interesting too is that you can mix these different types I also have a picture in a couple slides from now of a foldable and white organic light emitting diode which could be used as a um, mendable, bendable, foldable lighting that you can use in your office or at home. Let's talk now about the advantages and disadvantages of all LED technology when compared to regular LED technologies. In general, organic light emitting diodes tend to be thinner, lighter, and more flexible than their regular LED counterparts, and they also consume way less power. And I think these first two bullet points are, are important because they show you the potential of where this technology can be applied. You, I think you have a little bit more play. You're, you're thinking less about space, you're thinking less about durability, and now you're consuming way less power. There's, that means you can do a lot more things with this technology than regular LEDs. Furthermore, uh, OLEDs, o OLED arrays can be made into large sheets very easily, and this makes them ideal for displays and TVs. Imagine, you know, in the not too distant future, having a 60-inch organic light emitting diode display or a TV. Uh, one of the cons, though, is that one of the disadvantages of OLED technologies are that they have a shorter lifetime and they have a high manufacturing cost. 
And I think this first this first disadvantage will will get better with time. I think with with more research, with more funding for research and more time, we can improve the lifetime of the materials. We can improve the lifetime of the device, and we can also improve the manufacturing methods such that we can lower the cost. We can minimize the cost to manufacture these devices. Another disadvantage that you need to take into account with organic light emitting diode displays or uh, organic light emitting diodes, sorry, is that they're easily damaged by water because again we're using organic materials. So one thing you need to consider is how you're going to stop the ingress of water uh, uh, for your device. How are you going to protect the internals from the outside? The final the final disadvantage is the intellectual protection. Uh, Kodak is one of the companies that owns uh, intellectual protection in the form of patents on this technology, which means that if you want to work or do research uh, with, with, with organic light emitting diodes, you need to first do a lot of legal, legal dancing, if you will, in order to obtain the right to do so. But I think, again, that with time, um, that can be improved also. The applications of organic light emitting diode technology today lie predominantly in the realms of displays and lighting. Uh, now, when I mean displays, I mean any sort of electrical interface that displays information, that shows information, such as tablet screens, cell phone screens, TVs, monitors, and even billboards. And I have maybe a couple pictures to show some of these manifestations of these applications. The top left picture is a phone that was released by Samsung earlier this year. I don't recall the exact model number, but I do know that that screen employs the use of an organic light emitting diode array. The bottom left picture is a great example of the foldable type organic light emitting diodes that we discussed earlier. You see that even while the, the object itself, the, the whole construct which contains the OLED array is folded, you can still see that it's, it's displaying a really nice picture. And in the bottom right, we have sort of a, a mix of white OLED and foldable OLED. And that would be used, that could be used for a lighting application. The top right picture is a concept drawing for a Kia dashboard. It's going to be in a car. And that would be a great example of a transparent type organic light emitting diode. Uh, I, I followed up on on that picture. Uh, the design itself is nearly done, uh, and it's it's entering some of the prototype stages. So it, it is it is possible. There is a, a somewhat working construct that employs the technology in question. But yeah, these are some of the really cool applications of organic light emitting diodes today, and it continues to grow. It will continue to grow in this industry. And you may very well see this soon uh, everywhere. So keep, keep an eye out for that. So to quickly recap, in this presentation we went over the general structure of organic light emitting diodes. And we talked about three methods used during the construction process to impart the device with organic material. Three methods which literally put the O in OLED. We also talked about different types or variants of organic light emitting diodes. Uh, which can be dependent on your application. Uh, some LEDs can be useful for lighting. Others can be used for things like heads-up displays. We also covered the advantages and disadvantages of this technology over other types of technology, such as regular light-emitting diodes. And finally, we looked at some of the interesting applications and ideas that people have for incorporating this technology into modern devices. Overall, in my study of OLEDs, I found them to be very interesting. And as a whole, organics in uh, semiconductor technology is quite exciting. We looked at some of the applications of this technology, and we already see that it has a great future in the display and lighting industry. Be prepared in the next few years to look and see your devices, such as your smartphones, your tablets, your TVs, and especially billboards incorporating this technology and using organic light emitting diodes. Well, that's it for my, for my presentation. My name is Mark Fermio, and again, I hope you guys have a wonderful semester. Thank you very much.